Hi guys, it's Cindy and I'm back with some more wallpaper ideas. I found a roll of borders that's a little bit smaller than what I've been working with. Um, on the other ones, I had folded some of them like this. And I made these big old wide pockets. Too wide. And then on the other ones, I had folded them up like this. And it made, let me get one a much better size pocket and I just added some lace to it but this particular border if it's folded in half is going to be too shallow and just to re-emphasize this one if I'd folded it this way it's not such a bad pocket did I say that right yes I think I did okay so it depends on how you fold it it depends on the wallpaper and sometimes it might depend on the design, what you want to do. Now this one, see, it had that real pretty design there. It has this really pretty design, but it's way too wide. So I thought, what if I made a little bag? Because I had made one before, I showed this last time. Made like a sack that is just the wallpaper border um, folded, glued at the bottom. I could have done that different, but I wanted to keep the design. Little scallop cut out so you can know that it's a pocket. So I thought, I'll do that on this one. So let me grab my chair, my squeaky chair. And basically what I did already was just, we're just testing it out. You see, all right, if I fold it a little bit and I fold it a little bit, I've got my design kind of centered in there. It's not quite, but it's, it's fine. And then if you can see there on the back, um, where the overlap is, I just need to trim it so there's enough that I can glue it. I'm just gonna cut down through there like that. So, so all I have to do is just glue the bottom and glue the back, and I've got a little sack. And then I can cut cut a divot out if I want. So let's put that aside. And let's see, glue's here. Um. Just gotta make sure you kind of straighten it up. If I don't like, if I didn't cut it straight that first time, or that time I just did, I can always overlap the other edge. It looks like I did a fairly decent job, so. Okay, gonna glue, glue on this edge. Get it to come out, come on. There we go. Glue on this edge. A little bit of glue on this edge, and then let's make sure I get this right. <laughs> yeah, let me just glue this, and we'll go from there. Okay, I hope that was in the frame. I need a little bit more glue here. So now that I've got that done, I can glue the flat part. So. I'm going to have to go. I hear a strange noise in my kitchen and it can't be anything burning because uh, I don't have anything on the stove, but I will be right back. I'm sorry. Hey, bye. Okay, I'm back. And you know what it was? It was my Instapot. Um, I had forgot to move the lever over, you know, to hold the steam in. So the steam was escaping. So uh, there's the bag just glued on the um, bottom and then where the folds overlap. I could cut out a dip, but I don't think I'm just going to keep it like that. I could add lace or whatever. So that's a bag made out of a piece of border that, you know, was smaller. So I don't have quite the big size of a bag. So that's one idea. Okay. Then something else I've been doing. Well, first of all, let me just do this one first. Um, here was a scrap I had left over and I think it was even already folded. And I thought, you know, that's like a little booklet cover. So that's another idea. So it's not straight at all. So I'm going to cut this with my old paper trimmer. I usually use my guillotine one, but it's way over there and I can't bring it over here. Especially since my husband traded me out the large one for the small one. So I now had a larger one. So this is cutting real well though on that. So anyway, I just cut a little booklet, made it straight. And keeping those for the next project. Um, now I just need to put some paper in it. And I had this paper pad here that's got the lines on it. And I figured if I just cut, I fold it in half. I need that paper trimmer still. 
I can tear it. Maybe I want to do that. See, it's got a rose on it, but I'm going to lose some of that rose. So let's just tear it all the way down. And just get an idea of how. Let's put you away. We don't need you anymore. And then just get the length. And then whatever's left over, even though it's shorter, it can go in the middle. It says believe, so that's good. And now, of course, I didn't think ahead about how I was going to bind this. So I could staple it. I got some that are peeking out the edge. It would really be cute if it was bound. Hold that thought. Here's my binding kit. <laughs> I find my needle, we're in business. Yep, I should have thought this out ahead of time. Let's see, that needle will work. Now, I really would like some prettier thread than just the white I usually use. I wonder if a regular sewing thread. I've got some right down here. What colors we have? spool of red. So why don't we just take some links of it and just double it. So you double that. It's got a big eye so this should be easy to thread. I got glue all over my fingers. And then let's go double again. Find the end of it. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and knot that just to keep them all together. So I've got four strands of just regular sewing thread. Okay, so make sure everything's going the right direction. Um, going to go in the center. And, oops, there goes my knot through. All right, to come up. There, I guess. Just winging it as I go here. <laughs> there we go. All the way down. And then back in the center hole. Okay, now I'm just going to tie it all together. I have the worst scissors in, the, in here. I've got scissors all over this house, but the worst ones are in here. So I need to make sure I'm on both two different sides of this center string. Pull it tight. I'm just going to tie a knot. I'm not even going to try to tie a bow with all these strings. We're just making do with what was at hand. And I'll attempt to cut the thread. Oh, it did. <laughs> it's got a sweet spot. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So makes a little booklet. Now I think I could round the corners wonder what that would look like. Let's see. The green ones are right here somewhere here there. Over here. I never know which is the big one and which is the little one. I guess I can look at the measurements. Yeah, that kind of softens it up a little. I've got another page peeking out again. Okay, little booklet made out of leftover wallpaper. Just a very simple stitch to sew some papers together. Now I've got something to put in my uh, journal, one of my pockets. And, okay, the last idea I had is one I really like. And it definitely uses up scraps. And the scrappiest of the scraps. So, let me get all this out of the way. Without it all teetering everywhere. Okay. It is making faux stamps. Now, um, usually I, you make them on book page. Here's how I do it. I make it on book page. I put some sort of background paper and then I put some sort of focal point. And I didn't think to bring my focal points, but I think they're within reach. Okay, so it's e always better if the paper is like this, just aged beautifully. So, I don't want to waste this, not that I'm ever going to use it all up, but why, if I want two thicknesses, why use two thicknesses of this when I can just glue it to a regular 
um, book that I just got at the Dollar Tree that's not very old at all. And also on this one, you can see I used it to when I was doing some stamping and some um, uh, distressing. So anyway, I'm putting ink down quite a bit. I mean, not ink, glue. Quite a bit of glue stick down. And then I'm grabbing, reaching over here and grabbing these scraps of wallpaper I had. And I'm just going to tear them into some smaller shapes. And I'm just going to glue them down. Well, that one's fairly large. And I, I don't have a whole lot of um, wallpaper scraps. I've only been using a couple of different ones. But this will give us the idea. So I just do patches like that. Uneven, doesn't matter. Straight edges, I don't care. I just like it as a background. And these two colors really contrast great, so that's good. I hope I'm in frame there. So then, um, I find some sort of focal point to put on them. I'm just gonna grab my bit box here and see what I've got down in here. Here's the box. And I'll try to quickly find something that's not too large. He might fit. Let's see. The rings might fit. The plants. Like I said, I should have this down first. I'm sorry. Just looking at all my little bits. times I will use a stamped image like this one of a plant and since I'm doing botanicals I might just do this so I'm just tearing it to fit and if I had my thing around here somewhere It rolls off of several. Okay. Now I'm gonna ink that up just a little bit. And I'm going to glue it down. So there's my focal point. And on this one, it's even more narrow, so that bird's not gonna fit. I might just do the leaf just to be quick about it. This is from a punch. Okay, now I usually use the, um, it's called mini pinking scissors, but there are different um, scissors that give you different edges. So it's just whatever you like or whatever you might have. There's a lot of people showing how to make these, but I just had those scraps of wallpaper out there, and I thought, well, that's definitely something you can do with the scraps. Don't throw any of it away. Okay, so we got two stamps there. Put these back. And I need to ink some more. could stitch around these that might be kind of cute I've never done that on the post stamps but I think it would be neat um, and then of course you need to do some sort of stamping of the postal um, mark postmarks and there's all different stamp kits out there this is just one I happen to have I don't know I can change out the circle but I usually just um, use it and you can't really read it too much. I kind of like it to come over my there. Yeah, there you go. It just finishes it off using the, this stamp. And I have another one. Let's see what it looks like. That one not be too bad on there. Since this one's bigger, let's put a little more and it's upside down so that makes it even more fun. 
Okay, a few more lines. Okay, I'm going crazy. All right, so anyway, two large faux stamps made. The background is made out of wallpaper um, scraps I just had here. Now, um, you can just glue these in um, your page on your pages as an embellishment. You can put them in pockets, tags, whatever. And I also make um, uh, paper clips out of them, too. So anyway, that's my ideas this time. Just to recap, we made faux postage stamps, some large ones, using scraps of wallpaper as the background. We just added a focal point and some stamping and some inking and the pretty cute little stamps. Um, we had made a booklet out of wallpaper. We used the wallpaper for the cover and just added some papers that I'd torn to fit. And I used a three-hole pamphlet stitch, but you could have used a stapler or glue or just whatever you normally use to make a little booklet and I just crimped the little corners off too. And then we made a sack. Just basically folded some wallpaper into a tube and then glued the bottom shut and then that made a little sack. I did not fold the bottom up because I didn't want to lose the border and I also didn't cut out a little divot because I didn't want to lose the border up there. So anyway, it's just a simple little sack. Depending on the size of your border is how, you know, big your sack will be. So Anyway, that's our ideas for today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.